Mike Ryan has been arguing with me since I got back about an assortment of different things. And today, for some reason, it was Devontae Adams, which used to be a source of unity for me and Mike Ryan. We both argued very vehemently that he wasn't a number one receiver. Yeah, it was a terrible take. <laughs> one of the worst. In our defense, when we had that take, he was very bad. <laughs> but he got really good after that. Well, you're you're tired of Devontae Adams. Oh, dude, enough with Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers. Like, oh, they're, they're like two star-crossed lovers that can never be together, except they chose to be apart. Ever since Devontae Adams got to Vegas, it would appear that he's only been plotting some sort of return with Aaron Rodgers, be it back at the Raiders or with the Jets. And there's just open frustration that from both sides that they haven't been able to get it done. Who can we blame for this? Who? Devontae, you had an opportunity. You had a choice. You got a really good offer from Green Bay. You took the bigger offer because it was, quote, your dream to play for the Raiders. And since you got there, you are openly into wired for sound microphones, subverting the Raiders at every turn. And now, back in the news cycle, I want to play with Aaron Rodgers again. Enough with this. You guys had the choice. You both made the choice that you wanted to move on. Maybe the Packers made their choice after it became untenable, but there was a path to staying together. And they're, they're going to force their way into this. Devontae Adams will almost assuredly, if they can make the cap situation work, find his way on the New York Jets this season. It's only a matter of time. I'm done hearing about it because it's been three years where they've openly campaigned for this. The part that I disagree with you on and the part that I would like to explore conversationally is the choices we make when we make them, what we think we're choosing versus what ends up happening. Because I don't believe... And this one's always tricky with athletes because of how confident they have to be to survive that ecosystem. But I always believe that the most confident of athletes believe that they are the reason for their success. So if Devontae Adams believes that, then he believes he made Aaron Rodgers, at least partially, as good as Aaron Rodgers was. And he feels like he can take that with him. Now, you learn pretty quickly that's not the case. Hell, Randy Moss learned it himself in Oakland. Like, he, Randy Moss could do it with anybody. Dante Culpepper. Didn't he do it a little bit with Randall Cunningham? He, Randy, yeah, he would make yeah, Randy Moss would make anybody that stepped into that Vikings offense prolific. Okay, so this is the part though where I can get entangled. So you've got two positions of extreme confidence: the quarterback, who's going to rightly feel like he's responsible for everything, and the diva glamour position in that sport that comes closest to star power to the quarterback which is the wide receiver who's now being paid as if he's almost worth as much as the quarterback because Justin Jefferson and C.D. Lamb are not human beings that can be guarded. They can't be covered. Devontae Adams probably goes to Oakland thinking, like Randy Moss did in going to Oakland, I'm going to do all of this again. And then it becomes, uh-oh, Garoppolo. It's not what I thought it was. And it got me to thinking, about the choice that broke apart LeBron and Kyrie, which I'm assuming Kyrie regretted or learned what it is that he had only because he didn't have it anymore. And so I'm guessing that Devontae Adams, when he was with Aaron Rodgers, however it is that people do the math on who's responsible for success on things, I'm guessing that Devontae Adams, specifically at that position where you and I are doubting, that guy's not that good. That guy drops the ball an awful lot. He's saying, no, look at me. I'm a number one receiver. Look at, I made Aaron Rodgers an MVP. And now I got my money in Oakland. And I do believe that a lot Vegas. of times, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's well, tricky. yeah, well, same sort of thing with him and Randy Moss. But thank you. I'm assuming that he didn't realize the choice that he made. Because you're, you keep doing this thing. Well, he chose the money. Well, he also chose another quarterback that he had an affinity for, that he had a relationship for, uh, with in college in Derek Carr, and he just figured, I can recreate that magic. And once it became clear that he made a bad decision, and then once Derek and that interpersonal relationship 
moved on to another place, he took every opportunity to be really upset with the quarterback production openly and a source of frustration inside that locker room, doing all the things that a superstar should do publicly to try to force his way out. Apparently, it was close last year with him forcing his way onto the New York Jets, and it probably would have happened if Aaron wasn't hurt. This is what he wants, which is it, – it's a little exhausting. Like, you had the opportunity to stay together. You really did. You you just didn't want to. And I understand how you get there, and I understand the ego of athletes and all that. That's all fine and dandy. He can recognize he made a mistake and not do this thing publicly that is exhausting and just a terrible look for everybody. I would rather the NFL just make a waiver and make this thing happen already than to hear about it for yet another NFL season. He got 10 games of Aiden O'Connell last year. That will make you miss Aaron Rodgers. Wasn't he productive with O'Connell? Yeah, like, no, like he's he, been good through all this. That's yeah, interesting he, about it. He just hasn't been like relevant right. in ways that Aaron made him relevant. Still good and in fantasy. Still, still, still good. Consistently week to week, as good. No, consistent in, in being able to count on this quarterback will force feed me. Keep in mind, a lot of things about the Packers maybe opened up with Aaron not force-feeding the ball to Devontae Adams every play. And Packers are doing best out of anybody in that equation. They are doing great right now. They are a sneaky pick to win the conference. Everyone this everyone year. I have talked to is floored by how good Jordan Love is and is going to be. Like it And the wide receiver core too has come online. You you kind of look back on it. Maybe they should have made this move a year earlier. That last season, um, the Derek Harp played with Devontae Adams, Adams actually had a career high in targets and had 14 touchdowns, which is the second most he's ever had. But last year, playing with O'Connell, after Derek Carr now, is no longer the quarterback that he initially went there for. All those issues of still wanting to play with Aaron Rodgers, understandably, kind of come back to the surface. Because when you're getting 180 targets in a season, it's tough to complain. I'm genuinely confused as to what Jordan Love will be used as a case study for because you could use him as an argument for, see, that's why you sit a guy. This is the Carson Palmer, John Kitna thing. This is the Aaron Rodgers thing. That's exactly why you sit a guy. But I'm also looking at it as like, no, this guy clearly needed to play because early, early on, he stunk. We were wondering if that was a terrible decision, yeah, but and we were openly spitting into microphones. How could you betray Aaron this way? You need to give him weapons. I think he needed to play more. Okay, and very easy to say from this position. You would have been benching an MVP. Like, you can't you can't bench an MVP quarterback in order to play Jordan no, the, Love. No, I, I still maintain, like, the, the Packers in that moment, while uh, he was MVP in 2021, I think, Aaron Rodgers, like, that's a championship window. And yes, you're set up now to compete for championships later on. You owe it to that guy in that title window to give him something to help him win. And they didn't do it. You have heard me for, I I think, probably 10 years quote Chris Bosh because I thought it was uh, hugely insightful. Chris Bosh, who uh, was unusually sensitive, vulnerable, communicative, and just really good at uh, introspection, said after being here for a while, You do not know what the sacrifices feel like that you're making until you're actually making them. A-Rod did not choose the money to be in last place. He chose the money and thought he was going to go make a last place team great. Devontae Adams didn't choose to leave Aaron Rodgers because he thought he was choosing losing over money. He thought he was going to take the winning with him. And to me, you get 10 games of Aiden O'Connell and you're like, okay. Blackjack dealer, I'm good. I'm good. Get me out of here. We're not going to compete for a championship. Get me to some place that felt like I used to feel when I got all the targets, all the catches, and I was relevant. What's interesting is like he doesn't have a terrible situation right now in Las Vegas. I mean, I understand you're, you're longing for Aaron Rodgers. We have a load of questions. It's now been a while since we've seen Aaron Rodgers be that guy that force-fed you the ball and made you great. Las Vegas isn't that much worse of a situation than New York because I don't have the same kind of questions for them. They were really feisty at the end of the year. They have a new head coach over there that they very clearly love, and he's got a quarterback in Gardner Minshew that's going to air it out. 
if you if you could listen to me, Devontae, maybe try to embrace it. This isn't all that bad. Two great quarterbacks. Good depth. Roy, Mitch, he will take your team to the promised land. Well, not the promised no, he land. He'll won't. take you three steps from the promised land. Their promised land is like, hey, let's be the wild card. Let, let, let's yeah. be feisty. Minshew is fully capable of taking Minshew you to that, that promised land. Where will land. Minshew take you? Put, put, it, put it on the put poll. It on the poll. No, not at Lebetard Show. You can't do it that way, Chris. It's a terrible pro, uh, uh, poll question. Where yeah. will Minshew take you? Just make it this. Will Minshew take you within three acres of the promised land? 